Welcome back to the factory. We're in the Makerverse studio today because there's a bit of construction happening outside. And I'm joined by Peter, who is working on the latest PicoDev module, a PicoDev three axis magnetometer. What is, what's a magnetometer? What is this thing? Yeah, so um, a magnetometer is a sensor that can measure the magnetic field strength in the X direction, the Y direction, and the Z direction. This is based around a QMC 6310 chip, and it is tiny. That is... So I've got that here to show you. Amazing. And each of those pads is 0.2 millimeters in diameter. They're circular pads. And um, I haven't worked with pads that tiny before. <laughs> I bet um, assembling this must have been quite a challenge. Even just like even just like the size of the pad and the thickness of the stencil. Like that it was a challenge. In fact, uh, I had one failure out of out of three of my tests. So um, yeah. Uh, what I found is that I just had to show an extra special bit of care around that, um, getting making sure that that uh, solder paste got through mm. into the to the chip, and I sort of showed it the same amount of care that I might have shown a, um, a one millimeter pad. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so you've got something that can measure magnetic field strength in three axes, but what what do you actually do with that information? What's that useful for? Okay, so the the most obvious use case is a compass to measure the, um, your bearing uh, okay. on the Earth's crust. So uh, we we're going to just for, for now ignore the, the Z component of the magnetic field and we're going to um, point this magnet magnetometer into different directions and we can see that using some trigonometry we can get a bearing. And that is... That is like surprisingly smooth. That is impressively like free of like any kind of jitter or, or, or noise. It's, it's a very, very flat line. Yeah, it's satisfying, isn't it? Yeah. So at the moment, we can point this around to what is true north. And we can see that this office has got a bit of magnetic um, disturbances in it. Yes, we got this little pair of tweezers here. I wonder if, wonder if they, you know, yeah. just moving those tweezers around the sensor is is changing that heading there's clearly something happening where if you have some like metal around it will it will interfere with that reading so if moving just this pair of like they're not magnetized but they are ferromagnetic just moving this pair of tweezers around is affecting the reading like there's there's metal on this board there's like metal in these connectors in these capacitors and resistors Surely, surely they're going to have some effect as well. What's going on with those? Or, yeah, or, so I mean, all capacitors have got trace elements of iron that you just um, have to live with. So how do you how do you calibrate a sensor like this? Like what what's the what's the procedure? Okay, well let's just look at the procedure for for an X and a Y direction, and we'll forget about the Z direction. Okay. So we're we're calibrating for a for a compass. So you, know, you hold your compass flat on yeah. on Earth. So that's yeah, that's fine. That's right. Um, so. What you would do is, is you grab your magnetometer and rotate around slowly. So we're getting all readings of both the X and the Y component, and we do a full 180. And if we were in calibration mode, then we then the sensor, then the Raspberry Pi Pico logs all of that data, and then runs a calculation and. It runs a calculation where it looks at the maximum and minimum values that it just observed and stores the average on a file on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So this is a, a reading that we took when doing a few rotations in the XY plane of our magnetometer. And the top one is the is the X reading for the magnetic field strength. And the bottom one is the Y reading. And as you can see, one lags the other in phase by about by, 90 degrees. By what looks like 90 degrees, that makes sense. Yeah. So on on this data, you can see zero is right down the middle of that plot. And these readings are heavily offset, heavily so, offset. So like in an ideal in an ideal world, these would both have like a, a zero DC offset. They would both be just oscillating about that zero point. That's right. And we designed this carefully so that we don't have these offsets right off the bat. So out of the box, these capacitors, these decoupling capacitors are spaced a little bit further away than you might normally space them 
for decoupling an IC. Right, with decoupling, you want to get the capacitor as close as possible to the chip. That's right. So on this particular case, well, there's little bits of iron in those capacitors, and we wanted this thing to be the best experience out of the box without calibration. So they're spaced a little bit back, the tracks are a little bit thicker, but those readings on that graph look like it's shocking. Yeah, that's that's... That seems quite poor. Like the the x axis, it doesn't even make it to zero at its lowest point. That's right. So I was. Um, so what's going on there? Well, in our lab, Brenton came up and got this magnet and just mashed the back of it with it for only about two or three seconds. That's all it takes. But this up. is these are um, these neodymium magnets. They might be. So. Yeah. Um, it, it did a bit of damage, and you can see that by a complete. Uh, like huge DC offsets there and on so, the on the magnetic field strength. So this raw data, where you're taking it through a few full revolutions, once you once you take those max that maximum and minimum value off each axis, you wind up with that. That's right. So the for the end user using this device after they've calibrated, then the readings just come out exactly like that without them without having to think twice. Right, but this this is still just raw like X Y like magnitude data, like XY field strength data. This isn't a heading yet. That's right. So it's corrected first. So we've, we've added this correction and then we could do it the, through the magic of trigonometry. Oh, the magic of trigonometry. Yeah. We can get a bearing. So what are we looking at here? So this is uh, the same data of us rotating the sensor around, um, but this is post calibration. So this is, this is actually the same data set that we started with right but we're, we're using the same algorithms that that the user of this device would use but we've just simulated it in uh, octave right so when the when the user calls like get heading or compass dot get heading without calibration they'll get they would have got this like pretty shocking red line which goes from i don't know what positive 25 to negative 80 or so so yeah. and that that was a full revolution. That was a full revolution. So <laughs> and so and then by by performing that offset, you've now got this like this beautiful one eighty to negative one eighty sweep as you rotate it around. That's right. So um, we're in the library. We're adding um, the, the normal reading, which is the calibrated reading um, option, but also you can get the raw readings if you want as well to see just just to experiment and. Yeah. Uh, see see what the performance is without calibration and you can compare and play. This is me moving the magnet in now. That is awesome. You're moving like 10 millimeters and you've got resolution across that whole 10 millimeters. Yep. And I'm all, and I'm about what about um 150 millimeters away from the sensor right now. Yeah, like at least at least a 100 mil. That is amazing. So this has got a really cool use case or a bunch of use cases. You, world's your oyster. You could um, like sense a, things that are... A non-line-of-sight proximity sensor. Yeah. How far out How far out can you take it on this sensor? All right, let's drag it away. Whoop. There we go. Look at this. So we're about, what, about 20... I'd say we're getting, 200 close, mil? We're getting close to 150. Oh, hurry up. Let's just go faster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Okay, wild. so look at this. We're, we're sensing about 200 mil? No, more. So you're moving like the width the width of the nut that's on the end of that stack of magnets and you're able to, to detect that. Yeah, that's fun, isn't it? Well, I guess that answers the question like why might you want raw data? Because, you know, like, oh, a magnetometer, like, of course you just want to use it as a compass, but this is actually, this is pretty cool. You could use yeah. this as, you know, a really, really smart Hall effect sensor with like tunable in, in and out points. Yeah, like that's that. right. You could have a whole bunch of thresholds and you could, yeah, you could almost use it like an analog situation. You'd have to um, take the Earth's magnetic field into account when you're setting up your project a little bit. What happens if you turn the magnet around? Let's have a look, look at that. So you could- You could detect, you could, could detect, detect a rotating shaft. Yeah. From that far away. I think we're about 300 mil now that's, away. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> they're pretty cool neodymium magnets, but, uh, you know, you could. Uh, but that's let's, heaps. That's a sweep of like. Let's just try with one. Oh, I'll have to take have, these away. Yeah, I'll have to put them on the other side of the office. That's just with one of those. 
something that something that kind of makes intuitive sense but it's like pretty amazing to see is when the magnet is sideways so it's like coplanar with the sensor you can move that magnet around and nothing happens but then when you flip it up you get that disturbance yeah that is i mean of course it makes sense like the field lines are going through the axis that we're not reading but like what a what a great demonstration of how well isolated the axes are. Like the, the cross coupling between the axes is. That's great. right. And you can experiment by reading X, Y, and Z all separately and seeing what values you get for the, for various positions of magnets and. This is giving me some you. ideas for the tutorials. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for that little fireside chat about probably more than you wanted to know about a magnetometer. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for joining me, Theatre. It's been fun. Uh, if you if you have any questions or if you just want to see something a little bit closer, hit us up on the Core Electronics forums. Until next time, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.